Hello, hello, boys. Hasn't been that long since the last time that I've done a review, so I'm bringing another one. Uh, this time around, I'm bringing a review for Remnant from the Ashes. Nah, uh, I just beat the game like half an hour ago. Uh, it's also not really, it's not really a long game, it's like 10 hours so only. So, I'll put the trailer and the usual snippets on the background later on. Uh, let's go with a so where do I have my review it's a pretty short one this time around uh, from the ashes my score first of all it's 7 out of 10 I've played the game on Xbox Game Pass as you might know I'm on that service until early January of next year so one more month in a couple of weeks I guess and then after that, we'll see what's... I'll probably going to go back to play some of my Switch games because I have a lot of that I need to play. Right, as for the game, it's an excellent game held back by its final stretch and short duration, which is kind of sad to say. If in ever worse, the story already felt somewhat, somewhat irrelevant to me. Here, I ended up outright skipping almost every dialogue and cutscene I could because it generated zero interest for me. On top of that, the game's artistic style just didn't appeal to my taste. For context, based on the little I managed to glean from the plot, the main character is some kind of a chosen one or survivor who travels to distant lands to put an end to an invasion. Alien, maybe? In these lands, they encounter other humans are struggling to survive, kicking off the journey to save the world, which involves traveling to different worlds and encountering diverse humanoid races, most of which are hostile. Uh, what kept me hooked every night after work, Dom, was the gameplay. Without doing anything groundbreaking, armed with two pistols and a mobile weapon, this straightforward and simple experience was fantastic. The game design is highly reminiscent of isometric ARPGs from two decades ago, a style that has become quite trendy again thanks to games like Path of Exile and the Return of the Diablo series. It moves well, feels great, and offers varied exploration, a wide range of enemies, orders, bosses with attack patterns, diverse locations, loot, and dungeons, though quite limited in that aspect. Everything, absolutely everything, feels like an ARPG, but presented in third person. It also borrows heavily from Dark Souls, the interface, crafting, limited use of some items, recharging, recharging a checkpoint, the fog before entering significant event rooms, etc. But as soon as you start shooting and killing creatures, the experience feels completely different from a Souls-like, and the game deserves credit for that. Lately, it seems you need to be a roguelike or Souls-like to generate interest among non-Nintendo gamers, which is a bit sad. Unfortunately, the final stretch is pretty meh. When you're given the final key, you'd expect, based on the prior 9 hours of gameplay that I've done, a final world to explore. Instead, you're met with hallways to walk through, no enemies, a final boss encounter, mechanically cool though, and a terrible cutscene leading straight to the credits. It leaves you with a sense that something was missing to run off the ending. The main campaign isn't very long. It took me about 10 hours, it's straightforward with no room to get lost, but it does offer some replayability through different weapons, skills to level up in new playthroughs, a difficulty selector, and that's about it. In that regard, I personally think it falls short too. I hope Remnant 2 is more polished and, of course, doesn't have such a sour ending. And yes, boys, that was about it. That's my review, hope you like it. And if you want to play the game, you have, you have it available even on Switch, so you don't have any excuse to not play it, unless you just don't like this kind of games. I'll see you on the next one. Choo -choo. That's it? That's it? Oh my god. I'm uh, so, I don't know what to think about it, honestly. <laughs>
Yeah, that gigs felt very lackluster. Mm. 